Hello, my name's Kevin Large and I'd like to welcome you to the ninth in our series of IoT Security Raspberry Pi emulation videos. In this ninth foundational video we'll be looking at QMU and Kali Linux. Specifically we'll be looking at how we can get our emulated Raspberry Pis running in QMU to network with our Kali Linux virtual machine running in Oracle VirtualBox. At the end of video number 8 we had the topology and the network set up as in the diagram shown. We had uh, three nodes, node 1, node 2, node 3, Kumu Raspberry Pis, each connecting using its own separate Windows Tap adapters. That was VME1 on node 1, VME2 on node 2 and VME3 on node 3 into not an actual physical switch but the Windows software bridge which acted as a software switch and then we were using internet connection sharing off of whichever network interface our internet was coming in on wireless or wired um, and we were sharing that with the network bridge. We now need to change our virtual networking setup we need to change it quite dr drastically I suppose you could say <laughs> or quite significantly might be a better way of putting it. Um, so what we've got now, again, we've got node 1, node 2, node 3. Again, going in via uh, Windows Tap Adapters VME1, VME2 and VME3. So these are our emulated Raspberry Pis. Again, they're going into the Windows Bridge, which is taking the place of a hardware switch. Only now what we've done is we've removed the internet connection sharing option and what we're now doing is we are now using the Oracle VirtualBox VirtualBox host only network adapter and we're sharing that as part of the Windows Bridge so if we look at the Windows Bridge contents we can see that we've now ticked the VirtualBox host only adapter VME1, VME2 and VME3 and because the Kali Linux virtual machine will be set up so as its network card will be connected to the VirtualBox host only adapter this will mean that we'll actually have the sandboxed network environment that you see on the screen now. So opening the uh, network connections what I've done is I originally had my internet connection coming in on my wired network uh, my internet connection being known as data and this was being shared with the network bridge using internet connection sharing so what we need to do is we need to remove that okay and once we've removed that we need to just double check to make sure that we have the Oracle VirtualBox host only adapter and VME1, 2 and VME3 as all part of the network bridge so I'm going to bring up the network bridge and you can see I've already ticked them now, so I've got uh, VirtualBox host only adapter, VME1, VME2 and VME3 and nothing else selected. Okay, So my Windows Bridge is effectively now working as a software switch with the three Windows Tap adapters for our three emulated Raspberry Pis plus the VirtualBox host only network adapter. Now if we look at uh, Oracle VirtualBox, uh, you can see I've got the IoT Security Kali Linux virtual machine. I've actually started it up to save a bit of time, so that's already running. Uh, if we go down to the network, you can see that the adapter is set to the host only adapter. That's the VirtualBox host only Ethernet adapter we have a little, at the, a little look at the network you can see it's now attached to host only adapter so we do not want net bridged internal network or anything else we just want host only adapter and the name of the host only adapter is virtual box host only ethernet adapter now that's only one part of the equation so what we now need to do is you also need to go to file and down to host network manager and this is where we can add 
remove or check the properties of our host only adapters. In here we can leave the settings for the host only adapter to configure the adapter manually with um, all zeros. This is the default uh, when you first create a host only adapter which on a Windows machine as soon as you install Oracle VirtualBox it will automatically create a single host only adapter for you. Um, but when you do this you will also find that by default you have the DHCP server enabled. Now we do not want the DHCP server enabled because we're going to use the Kali Linux machine as a DHCP server. So if we have the DHCP server enabled on the host only adapter it will be handing out IP addresses in the 192.168.56.0 range starting at an address of 100. Uh, well it'll hand out uh, 101, it'll start at 101, the server address is 100. This will conflict with our Kali Linux DHCP server so it's very important that you make sure you deselect the DHCP server that is part of Oracle VirtualBox host only Ethernet adapter and this can be found under the host network manager so file host network manager and then just deselect the DHCP server we don't want a competing DHCP server okay and then we can just start the Oracle VirtualBox. So I've already got Oracle VirtualBox started now and what I'm going to do is I'm going to go full screen with the host key which in this case is the right control key and F which will give us a full screen and then I'll just show you around Oracle uh, VirtualBox uh, Kali Linux image for a moment. I'm going to open up a terminal I'm going to maximize the terminal window and in here we'll just have a quick look around we'll do an IPA to see the IP address on Ethernet 0 which is 203.0.113.1 on the slash 24 network okay, so that's our IP address on Ethernet 0 uh, how did it get that IP address? the way it got that IP address I'm going to hit control L to clear the screen is if I look in the file etc network interfaces if I'm going to do a cat cat basically reads the content of a file to the screen cat etsy network interfaces you can actually see the settings now which set up the ethernet zero network card on this Kali Linux virtual machine um, now these were already created in the virtual machine appliance that we imported from the Cisco website so we've got auto eth0 which automatically brings up the ethernet0 network card we can see that the iface eth0 inet dhcp has been commented out so it's not using dhcp it's actually using a static addressing scheme so inet static we can see the IP address is 113.1 .1. netmask is slash 24 netmask 255.255.255.0 the network is on the 113.0 network and the broadcast address is 113.255 there is no default gateway on here um, so needless to say when you do an IPA you can see that we have the IP address 203.0.113.1 however when we do a IPL sorry not an IPL an IPR this will look at the routing table you see there's no default gateway on here it's just simply the directly connected network okay uh, what else do we want to have a little look at well we can have a little look at the settings for DHCP server again if we use the cat uh, command to read the contents of a file we can cat etc DHCP DHCP DHCPD.conf so in the Etsy folder DHCP folder DHCPD.conf we should find the contents of DHCP server configuration here we can see that we've got a uh, domain name of iotsecurity.org uh, DNS servers being handed out these are Google's DNS servers of course we've got a default lease time 600 seconds uh, which is uh, 10 minutes um, so our clients would be asked to send a renewal out in half that time so that would be uh, after 300 seconds or five minutes 
Uh, we can see a subnet range, um, we can see a subnet mask, um, optional routers, which is set to the address of the Kali Linux machine. Um, now, before we start our DHCP server, there's one thing that we need to do, and it's critically important that we do this. Your DHCP server will not run unless we make a slight modification to the file isc-dhcp-server, which lives in the Etsy directory inside the default directory. So we'll do a nano forward slash etsy forward slash default forward slash isc hyphen dhcp hyphen server. And in here you'll see that most of the contents has been uh, commented out. However at the bottom we have interfaces v4 and interfaces v6 which of course basically relates to the interfaces that we will actually use to hand out to the clients their IP addresses, subnet masks, default gateways, DNS servers, etc. Now, I'm not going to worry about um, handing out IPv6 addresses or anything like that. Uh, by default, what you'll find is that this file actually looks like this. Now if you try to start the DHCP server with it looking like that, it will fail. And um, unless you've done a reasonable amount of Linux, it's not exactly obvious as to why it is failing. However, the reason it's failing, of course, is because you do need to make sure you specify which interface you can actually connect to the network through to hand out requests to clients. So I'm just going to pop back in here ETH0, and that's all we need to do. Okay, um, We can do a Control o which writes out the um, writes out the file and a control X which will execute. Okay, now we've done that, we can start our DHCP server. However, before we start our DHCP server, what we can do is we can do this. Service ISC hyphen DHCP hyphen server space status. Okay, and this will tell us that currently the DHCP server is inactive. Okay, so it's not running. However, this command's a lot more useful once it starts running. So, in order to run the DHCP server, all we're going to do is I'm just going to clear the screen for a moment with Control L. We'll bring that previous command back up again, and instead of saying status, we'll put start. Okay, we'll wait a few seconds. And now the DHCP server is up and it is running. If we now look at the status, hit the up arrow a couple of times, you will notice that the DHCP server is active and it's running. Okay, um, there's still a little bit of information here from previous uh, tests for this video where I've got uh, leases going out. Um, however, if we have a look in the uh, leases file, and this is quite interesting, we can have a little look at the leases file, and what I've done is I've cleared the leases file. I'll clear the screen with a control L, and then what we'll do is we will uh, nano where the leases file is stored, which is basically in var lib dhcp, dhcpd.leases. Okay, we can see there is actually already a lease. Uh, now, where is that lease going? That lease has gone to a client hostname of desktop 76HUOU46. What on earth is that? Well, believe it or not, that is my Windows 10 host computer. Um, my Windows 10 host computer that VirtualBox is running on, that Qmu is running on, um, is connected, of course, to the Windows Network Bridge. So the host computer has actually got the first IP address in the range. The range was uh, starting at uh, 25. Okay. So this is this is this is quite interesting. So the next address that would be given out normally would be 26. However, that said, I've been playing with this a little bit, and I think I gave out 26 and 27 a little while ago. So if 10 minutes hasn't expired, it may actually give out perhaps 28. Okay, but that is an address which has been given to the Windows client. Now, actually, I wonder whether we can see that. Um, let's have a quick look. 
I do a Windows Windows key R um, one second I'm still in the Kali Linux window at the minute I need to make sure I'm in the Windows window mm. so Windows key R and type CMD and that will obviously open in the window which I'm using to monitor recordings because these things always do there we go and then type in ipconfig let's have a little look what we got here there you go this is my Windows 10 host machine that VirtualBox is running on that um, the uh, three Kumu emulated Raspberry Pis will be running on shortly and that the uh, Windows Network Bridge is configured on and we can see here Ethernet adapter network bridge um, it's got its DNS suffix it's got the IP address 113.25 uh, the default gateway being the Kali Linux machine okay so that's, that's quite interesting in its own right what I'm going to do now is I'm going to hit control X to come out of the um, var lib dhcp dhcpd dot leases window um, I don't want to save any changes I might have accidentally made in there I think I might have just accidentally typed the letter R and then removed it at one point so I'm just going to hit no okay so we've made no changes to that file um, I'm going to look again at the status okay um, ah there you go so in fact if you have a little look at this you can see the discover the offer the request and the acknowledge the Dora so very familiar to a CCNA uh, curriculum there the standard discover offer request acknowledge um, and this was going out to desktop 76 HOU 42 which will be the host name of my Windows machine the next thing we'll do is we will start up our emulated Raspberry Pis so I'll go into my downloads folder I'll just start up node number one first of all I'll run the batch file we can see the command running uh, we can see that we are connected to the interface name VME1 and if you remember VME1 uh, was uh, connected to the Windows Bridge so if we can bring that up so VME1 is connected to the Windows Bridge taking the place of a hardware switch which is also connected to the VirtualBox host only adapter because they're all part of the same Windows Bridge and the Kali Linux machine is running as a DHCP server so the Kali Linux machine should now offer IP address, subnet mask etc to this emulated Raspberry Pi how cool is that? Right, let's bring up the Kumu instance so this is a Kumu instance Kumu RPI 1 I'll minimize the command prompt for the moment just to keep the screen reasonably tidy uh, what I'll also do actually is I'll minimize the file manager window and we've got a Kali Linux window in the background there now it says IP address not available yet it remembered the old IP address that it had when we were using internet connection sharing and bang there you go look at that 203.0.113.26 it's actually given out the very next address in the range of IP addresses how cool is that okay and if we do a status we can see that uh, we've had another discover offer request acknowledge um, the discover has come in from uh, 101011 101011 being the MAC address of uh, this machine um, Q, Qmu RPI1 and we can see that it's given out the IP address of 26 to Qmu RPI1 awesome okay so what we'll do now is we'll start the other two up I'll start them up in order
So node 2 has just been started by running the batch file. Uh, we've got interface name of VME2 for the Windows Tap Adapter for node 2. Of course the Windows Tap Adapter for node 2 is VME2 which goes into the Windows Bridge. We can see it going into the Windows Bridge over to the right hand side here. Uh, the Windows Bridge goes off via the VirtualBox host only network adapter to the Kali Linux machine with the DHCP server running on it and away we go. So we should have well, technically speaking, if all things being equal, this should get the very next IP address. Let's have a little look what we've got. We've got uh, 25 has gone off to the Windows machine, the Windows host. It's actually gone to the uh, Windows bridge. 26 has gone to the Node 1 emulated Raspberry Pi, Q QMU RPI 1. So it should be 27. Now DHCP is notorious for doing slightly unusual things. It may not be 27, but it uh, if it gives out the next IP address in the range, it should give out the address of 203.0.113.27. Okay, so at the moment we've got an APIPA address, and there we go. Look at that. 203.0.113.27. Excellent. Okay, and if we look at the status again, let's get a little bit of clear space. I'll do a control L to clear the screen. And what have we got? Kumu RPI2 has got the address 27. Absolutely superb. Right, so this is working well. Uh, let's just finish it off by firing up the final emulated Raspberry Pi. And what we'll have is we'll have a little sandboxed network of three emulated Raspberry Pis together with a Kali Linux machine and um, this will be a great foundation for doing many of the labs in fact you can make your own labs up you don't need to just uh, stop with uh, the uh, Cisco labs um, this is really a nice environment to just practice and just play around with the sandbox network environment and just see what you can do with three Raspberry Pis and a uh, Kali Linux virtual machine. Okay so that's now going out through VME3. Here we have No3 loading, Kumu RPI3 and Kumu RPI3 should get, what should Kumu RPI3 get? Uh, 29 would it be? Let's have a little look. No, 28. Okay. Let's see if it gets 28. Now you can actually go into uh, the leases file and you can uh, very carefully delete those leases. Don't delete anything else, just delete the leases and uh, that will clear the leases in the leases file so they can be handed out again. Alternately of course you can just wait 10 minutes for the lease time to finish and there we go 203.0.113.28 So what I'm going to do, I'm going to log into this Pi with the user Pi and the password of Raspberry. I will also bring up the other two Pis so Pi, Raspberry, and finally, third one, Pi, Raspberry. Okay, so we've got, uh, let's see, what have we got? Kumu RPI 2, Kumu RPI 1. See if we can tidy this screen up just a little bit. And Kumu RPI 3. Uh, if you notice that your mouse sort of disappears in the Kumu window, it's just a matter of hitting Control Alt G to release it. Okay, and then you can drag the window around. Okay. 
Okay, so Control Alt G to release. That will release the mouse, and then you can drag the window around. So what we should be able to do is we should be able to ping 203 ah, number lock. We should be able to ping. Two oh three dot zero dot one one three dot uh twenty five. Ah now that's my Windows bridge. I can't ping my Windows bridge because the Windows machine has the Windows firewall switched on. If I switch off the Windows firewall, which is blocking ping returns, I should be able to ping the network bridge. Okay, so that's what's stopping those pings from working. But if I try pinging the other emulated Raspberry Pis, we should be good to go. So that's myself. So Q, Kumu RPI1 is pinging itself. 27 is Kumu RPI2. Now with the Linux ping, it will just continue until you hit Control C to stop it. And of course, 11328 is Kumu RPI 3. Okay. Now let's have a quick look at ARP minus A. Let's see what ARP minus A gives us. And we can see that we've got the output of ARP minus A. It's quite interesting in its own right. Uh, we've got uh, 11325, which has a MAC address for the actual physical machine, the Windows host that I'm running everything on. Um, we've got 113.1, which has the MAC address of the Windows bridge, which is an interesting MAC address, starting 0800 2787 D1 E3. And we've got the two other emulated Raspberry Pis, RPI2 and RPI3, with their MAC addresses 101012 and 101013. Superb. OK, so that was quite a longer video, um, but we covered an awful lot of material in that video. Um, so we've actually managed to create a sandbox network. We've managed to get three emulated Raspberry Pis up and running. Um, we've managed to get a Kali Linux machine to work as a DHCP server. We've managed to get basically all of this running and on that note we'll call this uh, video uh, the end for this session and please uh, join me again for the next session. It would be a pleasure to uh, see you there.